Just over a year ago, I picked up a 1993 Toyota Land Cruiser for $5,000, and since then, I've put a ton of work into it to get it to where it's at today. In this video, we're going to discuss how much I've spent in the last year fixing and building this Land Cruiser, and attempt to itemize these expenses so you can get an idea of what you're getting yourself into if you plan to build your own. All right, guys, as the title of the video says, today I wanna to talk about how much I've spent on the Land Cruiser in the last year of ownership to get it to this point. Now, if you do not wanna watch the whole video, I understand, so I'll save you time, I'll just tell you flat out, with the cost of the Land Cruiser, I have spent $15,000 to get it to where it's at today. Now, if you do care about seeing how everything breaks down, where the money's been spent, where I could have saved money, or maybe where I could have just spent no money at all, Stay tuned, we're gonna itemize everything, break it down, and get into where the money has gone. I really wanna focus on the cost of parts for this build, not including the Land Cruiser itself as part of the total. Um, but just to go over it, the Land Cruiser itself was $5,000. Now, if you know a thing or two about these 80 series, you know that $5,000 is not a common price that you're gonna spend on one of these. Normally, and I'm probably kind of toss not a low number here but normally you're looking between 8,000 to 15,000 and the 93 to 97 FZ J80s cost more than the 91 to 92 FJ 80s and the 95 to 97s cost even more so it really depends on what you end up buying but even with all of the issues that this truck had and it's a 1993 by the way, $5,000 is what I paid for it, and that's a very cheap price to get into the Land Cruiser world. What you see here is a naive version of myself one year ago thinking I was going to get away with this small checklist and finish it off with doing a routine maintenance. Uh, plot twist, I never got to the maintenance before I tore the motor out of this truck, but these first items I bought were $320. That included a new fusible link and junction box, new belts, an oil pump leak kit, which includes a new O-ring for the oil pump and Allen head screws to replace the old JIS screws, a valve cover gasket and spark plug tube seals, new valve cover bolts, new throttle body gasket, and all of the coolant bypass hoses. These are, all these items are required in my opinion, and you could have saved money here if you didn't buy OEM parts, but we want these parts to last. Uh, so we went with OEM parts, but we could have saved money here for sure. This is where my plan to get this thing up and running completely fell apart. If you've been following this build, you know everything kind of went south from here. <laughs> but I was working on replacing the valve cover gasket and the spark plug tube seals to fix some oil leaks that this engine was having. And I noticed when the valve cover was off that the timing chain guide was broken. And I'm not gonna get too far into this since I've talked about it so much in previous videos. And if you wanna check out those videos, they're in the description, by the way. But it's worth pulling the motor to replace this since so much has to come apart to replace that guide. And this is where things start to get more expensive. I needed some tools to aid with removing and rebuilding the engine, and while I can't remember everything, I'll toss out a generally close number of 300 to 350 for tools. I also needed a new engine stand because the engine stand that I already had was not capable of holding this motor. It's very heavy and very long, um, and that new stand, which I bought from JEGS, was $166.85. I know these are not parts for the Land Cruiser, but they are related to the build, and you have to be ready for these kind of expenses, so I'm going to just add them into the total cost of the build. Once the engine was out, the teardown began, and I started making a list of parts that needed to be replaced, which was basically everything. There was so much oil caked on this engine that I couldn't even really tell where it was leaking from. I just knew that it was leaking from everywhere that it could leak from. Once it was fully torn down, I sent it off to the machine shop for decking, boring, and honing. To be more specific, the block was cleaned, it was magnafluxed to check for cracks, and it was cracked, we'll get to that later in the video. The rods were resized to achieve proper clearance, the cylinders were bored 20 over, and I bought new pistons from them which they installed on the rods for me. And of course, I also got new rod bearings and main bearings. The main bearings are Clevite and the rod bearings are ACL high performance bearings. Now for the pistons, and this is gonna be controversial and also contradict what I just said about buying OEM parts, they are aftermarket pistons. I've used aftermarket pistons and engine internals 
you know, bearings, rods, all this stuff in every single motor I've ever built and I've never had an issue. Now the rods are still the OEM units, but we are using aftermarket bearings and we are using aftermarket pistons. And I'm not too concerned about them failing, but if they do, I will definitely let you guys know. Now, moving on to the cylinder head, that got a resurface, a five angle valve job and new valve seals. And that brought the total of all the machine work and new parts, including the pistons, to $1,828.65. So I said I would mention the cracked block and I actually got really, really lucky here and I paid zero dollars. But just so you have the context, I had a crack starting at the freeze plug bore and it was making its way down to the block drain. And the scary part about this is it's actually kind of common based on the research that I did on the forum boards. A lot of the early 1FZs can actually have the same crack. So I wasn't that surprised when I saw this on my motor. The only thing that this cost me was gas because the machine shop let me borrow their lock and stitch kit to fix the crack completely free of charge. And this stuff basically, if you haven't seen it before, you drill holes in the block. It's kind of terrifying as you're doing it, but it stitches the metal together and it is built specifically to fix cracks in engine blocks. It doesn't leak now. Um, I've had some people that were a bit skeptical of this fix, but it doesn't leak. Lots of people have done it and I don't expect this to leak in the future. Uh, this would normally be pretty expensive, but I definitely lucked out here. Back to the engine rebuild. As I was going through the rebuild process, I kept needing to buy more and more parts for it, naturally. And while it was a part, I figured this is the best and only time to prevent future headache. So money had to be spent here. There are so many parts that comprise finishing up the engine rebuild, but in summary, I bought a head gasket kit which contains everything that you need to replace when installing the cylinder head, new head bolts, every seal on the engine, connectors for the wiring harness that shattered when I took the harness off, exhaust studs, o-rings, vacuum hose, timing components, that's a new slipper, a new guide, a new tensioner, and a new chain. Um, a bunch of FIPG, which is the form in place gasket. You know, it's like it's like RTV, but the Toyota brand. I rebuilt the oil cooler. I got new core plugs, AKA freeze plugs, expansion plugs, frost plugs, whatever you want to call them. And a bunch of other parts too. The head gasket kit, the timing components, and the head bolts are the real expensive parts here. Everything else is pretty reasonable. The total of all of these parts were $1,435.56. Now we move on to the wiring harness, and I guess this part was optional, but I had eight broken connectors, and they were all very important. Two of them were the knock sensors, and six of them were the fuel injectors. So the connector themselves would still go onto the injector and onto the knock sensor, but they wouldn't secure, they wouldn't clip onto it because the actual piece that secures it there snapped off. And I really didn't want to have that coming off when I was on the trail and then me scratching my head trying to figure out why the Land Cruiser is not running correctly when I could just replace these connectors now and not deal with it in the future. In order to do this, I needed tape, loom, connectors, wire, heat shrink, and thermo tape for the EGR section. That area is a known issue on these 80 series and the EGR tube will melt your harness. So all in all, this was pretty cheap at only $164.97 and it's totally worth it in my opinion for the peace of mind and also the last piece of the puzzle to complete the engine work. Since I already had the drivetrain pulled out of the Land Cruiser, I thought this would also be an excellent time to install low range gears. So I picked up the 311 gears from Trail Gear. Now, coming from a Toyota pickup that had dual cases, this was my next best option to achieve lower gearing in the Cruiser, which translates, in my opinion, to more capability off-road and makes it a hell of a lot more enjoyable. And I will definitely be gearing the axles in the future as well. I just haven't got to it yet because I'm spending too much money on all of this other stuff. So as I already mentioned, I used the 311 low range set from Trail Gear. I did not buy the high range underdrive kit or the part time kit because I want to drive the cruiser as it is and kind of just get a feel for it. And if I decide I want to change it in the future, then I'll do that then. Um, the 311 gears were $452.57 and I also replaced both output shaft seals and both output bearings in the transfer case and those were $92. 
At this point, the truck was finally running again and I had some suspension parts and wheels that I bought right after I figured out that the motor needed work and it was finally time to install them. I went with the three and a half inch Dobbinson's lift kit using their dual rate long travel springs paired with their 2.6 bodied six inch lift IMS shocks. This was a recommended combo to me by David Otero over on I Hate Mud to get a three to three and a half inch lift that will handle the weight of a rig that's decently outfitted in the future and also provide a good ride and suspension travel. The cost of this kit was $1,873. Now, nothing's ever easy and you can't just lift your truck and get away with it. That is just not the way that it works. The suspension geometry gets thrown off and you end up having to buy more parts to get it back to where it's supposed to be. So. I bought sway bar drop brackets from Icon along with new sway bar bushings and extended brake lines from Metal Tech. The brackets and extended brake lines came out to $233.90 and the bushings, since they were OEM, were $57.81. These would have absolutely been cheaper, like by $50, if they were an aftermarket part and not OEM. However, the OEM bushings lasted 230,000 miles, so I just went that way instead. I'm still finishing up the lift, and I have some I'm Keith radius arm mounts and Panhard correction brackets to fix the caster and the Panhard angle, but I still have not installed those yet. Those were $210. For the wheels, I'm running Icon Rebound Pros with the interlock bead locking system that's actually super cool in a 17 by 8.5 wrapped in a 38 by 1350 Milestar Patagonia MT02. The wheels were $1,349.39 on sale and the tires, they cost more than the wheels at $1,474.48. I also had to buy lug nuts, which were $50.96. Now the Icon wheels are a really good looking wheel, but unfortunately they don't come in the greatest offsets or backspacing for larger tires. The Icons are a zero offset wheel, and because of this, when I would turn with those 38s, it would hit the frame, it would hit the control arms, and it was just all over the place. So. I had to run spacers to get to around negative 38 offset if I remember correctly. And these spider tracks spacers are recommended by everybody. They have the correct center bore for the 80 series. They just fit perfectly, um, but they come with the price tag and they were $315. Could I have just bought spacers off of Amazon and been fine? Probably. But am, would I be worried forever that my wheels are going to fly off on the freeway? Probably. So for me, the $315 was totally worth the peace of mind. And lastly, I had some random odds and ends that I ended up having to fix, like the mirrors wobbling around all over the place, which is super common, by the way, on these 80 series. I installed a digital coolant gauge and I replaced my water pump and my fan clutch because for some reason I did not do that during the engine rebuild and I had to do it afterwards. And the total for all of these random parts was $354.28. So the total amount that I've spent in just over one year of ownership building this Land Cruiser is $10,679.42. Now, of course, this would have been a lot cheaper if I didn't have to rebuild the engine, but the peace of mind that it gives me was well worth the cost, in my opinion, so I'm actually happy that it all panned out that way. But with the engine stuff out of the way, I would have spent around $7,000 compared to the $10,600, which is actually a pretty fair amount for all of the work that's gone into this truck. I still have a lot to do, and it's nowhere near being complete, but it is at a point now, mostly, where I can at least drive it and start working out the kinks and figure out what else I need to upgrade. And in terms of what's left to do off the top of my head, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot here, but I still need to refresh the axles, the brakes, install gears and lockers, look at aftermarket axle shaft options, you know, upgrade the interior, eventually build out the interior, look at armor, sliders, bumpers, a winch, the list goes on and on and on and on. But all of those things will be in the year two update and we'll just have to get to that when we get to it. So 
Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and leave a comment. Catch you guys in the next one. Later. Thank you.